This drill bit is really stuck in there. What if I need that drill bit? I surrender. <laughs> oh no, I have the hiccups. Ugh. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. Today we are mounting an orchid. Or I should say, going to try to mount an orchid. Also, why am I referring to myself as we? That's really weird. I have this piece of driftwood. I had a hell of a time finding the right wood. I don't live in a woodsy area to start with, and uh, the pet stores around here, a lot of their driftwood is plastic, which is useless. Uh, even if it's, you know, the reptile bark, it's mostly cork. And I don't like cork for mounts. Uh, it, there are a lot of benefits to cork for mounts, but the mounts I had in the past frustrated me with cork because I couldn't soak them very easily. I mean, I'd have to flip them upside down. It was just kind of a pain in the butt. I did buy a piece of cork uh, because I think that that might work okay for mounting my staghorn fern, but at the same time, that may not be strong enough and I may just use a slat of wood. But I grabbed one just in case. This is Mapani driftwood. Now, this is an extremely hard wood, which is a good thing. I know that it's safe because this is actually made for fish tanks. And you know, you can disinfect the different woods that you find and whatnot. But like I said, I don't really have access to just go out and forage for the wood, so I had to find a piece from a pet store. And this wood is so hard that when I was drilling my holes to put a hanger on it, my drill actually started smoking, and so did the wood. I've never seen this do that. That's a DeWalt, it's an 18 volt, kind of your standard DeWalt drill, but that's a tough drill. It's possible that there's just like a massive knot in this area of the wood, I don't really know for sure. But what I do know is that when I mount an orchid, I like to drill a lot of access holes. Like, I, I just kind of do a grid. If you watch Rick L's video, hi Rick, he goes through and shows how to mount in a very professional manner that makes way more sense than how I have ever done it. So, watch his stuff. I have this brass of Nadosa that I got from the orchid show here in St. Louis. It's just, you know, a standard division. It's like 10 bucks. It's falling to pieces. It has like next to nothing as far as viable roots go on it. And that's kind of why I want to mount it because it's going to be a little bit easier to avoid rot and whatnot. And I mean, orchids do great on mounts. The main reason I stopped using mounts is because where I live, there are a lot of earwigs and the earwigs really liked the wooden mounts and the wooden baskets that I at one time had a lot of my vandas and oncidiums in and I would bring those plants in here into my garage during the winter time and the earwigs would come around and I'd be out here and if you've ever been bitten by an earwig, you would understand why I do not use the wood mounts anymore. Or maybe I'm just a baby, but it hurts. It, it comes out of nowhere. It's very shocking. I mean, it feels like getting a shot, so it's not the worst thing ever, but it's not something I enjoy having all the time. I startle easily. What I'm going to have to do here, I'm using 9-gauge wire. Uh, kind of overkill for this sort of thing, but usually when I'm using wire, it's to make S-hooks for my Vandas. Vandas can get pretty hefty, so the 9-gauge is more appropriate for the Vandacious Orchids. For a mount, that's probably not necessary. The holes are not quite big enough, so I'm going to go ahead and re-drill those with the next size up and see if I can't drill them out. I'm thinking since I was able to actually get the holes drilled, maybe just drilling the holes out and making them bigger, hopefully it won't pose a problem. It should be okay since the hole's already drilled, so I'm just gonna try and make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna do that real quick, I'll be right back. And uh, a good learning moment right here. Don't bend your wire too much because it gets tangled up, it gets kinky in there, and you can't move it around and then you can't work with it. Now uh, it's been a mess trying to get this out. It's actually jammed. I can't get it to go through any further. It won't go any further in the other direction because it's just too kinky from messing with it. So, uh, right, yeah, that's as far as that's going in there. That'll have to do it. That will, that'll work fine. It's pretty, pretty stable. Should be all right. Now, let's actually mount the orchid. Well, I attempted to drill some guide holes to use from the back and that happened. So, uh, yeah, just gonna have to learn how to move on without the holes in there. Oh well. All right, this drill bit is really, really, really stuck in there. It does not want to come out. The, it, the drill won't grip onto it anymore. So I think I'm going to have to attempt to drill a tiny hole right next to it so I can pull it out. Or I could just say forget it and just leave it there. Yeah, now that's not gonna work. And what if I need that drill bit? That'd just be lazy, right? Let's see if I can get that out. Do you guys see this? 
I've been trying to drill a hole next to that one, like just a little bit off to the side from it. It won't go into the wood. What is so tough that it is actually shredding the steel off of my steel drill bits? Ugh. I didn't think this was gonna be that hard. I really just wanted to do a good job at this, but I, I, I but that doesn't seem like that's gonna happen. Okay, I've tried pliers. I've tried drilling through the other side that this wood, not good for drilling. So I'm going to attempt to soak it for a little while. See if that helps. If not, then this drill bit's becoming part of this work at mount, at which I would prefer to not happen. 20 minutes later, I surrender. This is what it is. That's where that drill bit lives now. I always have fond memories of this video when I see this thing. So I have some floral wire here. I would prefer to use the green plastic coated stuff. It's basically a spool of twist ties, but I'm out. And this will work just fine for now because the goal here would be that the brass of it takes root on here and I can cut this off and not too long, so that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and guide this through the back. There we go. Get this to come on out like so. Pull a decent amount of this through. I'm going to do the same thing through this hole. Now, I went in here and I pruned out as much of those dead roots as I felt confident that I could cut out without damaging the very few root tips that are in there that are actually still looking okay. So uh, that's about as good as I think it's going to get. Yeah, I don't wanna go too much further in there. And then I sprayed this down with hydrogen peroxide, let it soak for a few minutes, and then I rinsed it. Whenever I use peroxide when I'm cleaning an orchid, I always think it's important to rinse it. You know, because what you're doing with the peroxide is you're killing bacteria. And if you kill the bacteria, that's great. But if you just leave a bunch of dead bacteria there, it attracts bacteria to grow. So flushing it out is a good idea afterwards. I'm going to try my best to make this drill bit that's in here work for me and try and make something positive out of it. You know, I mean, it just is what it is. I find it kind of funny at this point. So I'm going to anchor this in here and then I'm just going to keep wrapping it and wrapping it until it really doesn't give when I move it. Yeah, and that's that's basically it. Pretty simple, or <laughs> at least you would think. Leave it to me to take something that should be real easy and make it make it ridiculous and overly complicated. Welcome to my channel. Okay, well, surprisingly, that drill bit actually came in really nifty. This is really, and they're pretty sturdy, which is not normally a result I would get with only having two guide holes to go through, so I'm pretty pleased with that. It's gonna take this while to get rooted on here, and I'm, and I'm probably going to have to continue to keep pruning off these dead roots, as you can see here. There's more I can get, so. I'll be working on that some more, actually. Uh, but for the time being, I'm going to go ahead. This wood's already pretty soaking wet. That's another thing I like about the Mapani Driftwood is that it holds the moisture for a really long time. But uh, it's kind of useless if you can't drill through it. So maybe I won't use this again. I don't know. We will see. Overall, I like it. I could pack some moss around there. Brassavolas don't really like to be soaking wet, so I'm not going to. The main thing I want is for it to be attracted to the moisture of the wood and for it to send its roots out. Orchids really love growing on wood, you know, because that's what they do in nature. I just kind of thought this would probably be the best bet for this guy in the long run. And over here, I still have these two pieces from the Brassavola that when I was dividing this, or I wasn't dividing it, I bought this as a division, but as I was pruning the roots up, they just popped right off. Oh no, I have the hiccups. I don't think a movie was meant to happen today. So with those guys, these guys right there, I feel like that was terrible grammar. Um, I'm just going to do something a little bit different with them. I could try and tuck them into the mount, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them back here on the little humidity table I've made. I'm just gonna let them sit on top of that live sagum moss that's there. It's a sterile medium, it's a moist environment, but they won't be in direct contact with the water. Hopefully that will encourage them to send out some roots. I'll probably mess with that stuff in this weekend's vlog. And the reason I'm doing that is because these guys really don't have anything on them in the way of roots go, which you could tell if this would focus. So there are what look like potentially some root nubs in there. Brassavolas, they're not known to be super slow growers, so that'll take over that mount fairly soon, so I don't really need to put more on there, and I wouldn't mind going ahead and getting these rooted and doing something different with them, possibly, so that is that with these guys. Uh, while I'm not thrilled about the chaos of getting this done, I am very happy with the result. I love Brassavola nodosa, Brassavola crosses of all kinds really are pretty fantastic. I'm really hopeful that this will go ahead and take root and stick to that wood. It should. They like being mounted, so 
it should be just fine. I'm going to make sure that this gets high filtered light, high humidity, and I'm going to be making sure to feed it and supplement it with every other watering in a micro dose just to be safe. Yeah, sorry that took so long. It would just wasn't behaving. I did it done though, and I like the results. And I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to like the video. It helps a lot. Subscribe as well. I upload multiple times a week. Put my social media down below. Follow me. I'll follow you back. We can look at each other's pictures and have fun nerdy plant time. Oh, and any suggestions on how to get this drill bit out of there would be greatly appreciated because now there's an orchid tied to it, so that doesn't help. But if it's within the next couple days, I could pop this back off. It should be all right. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. And as always, keep on growing.